Hey, we're live. Back at the uh, wrap up of Mini Son of Monster Palooza. Um, I've got my fresh new uh, mic stand here we've been using. I was like, what can we use this fin for right here? We, we clipped a, a lav mic on it, and it's the perfect mic stand, so angry fish guy. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not going to be sculpting tonight. I'm very sorry if anybody was tuning in to uh, watch me sculpt. I thought I was going to, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be really honest. I'm extremely tired. Um, this has been <laughs> a marathon, three days. Um, I had no idea when I first started this that it was going to snowball and explode into this full-blown interview Johnny Carson late night uh, you know type thing um, but I loved it all of the people that said yes we want to come in we want to talk we want to have this uh, monster palooza um, experience uh, I, I was so grateful that they all said yes I'm grateful to the audience out here that has been following me and liking what I do my fabrication and uh, um, have asked for you know, can we get prints? Can we get t-shirts? Are you going to make the models available? Things like this. Um, I'm grateful to you guys that, uh, that wanted to own a little piece or have a little piece of what I do. So like I said, the merchandise, you know, that's not why I do this is to sell something, but it's like, you know, I love creating, but for people to want a little piece of this, this is fantastic. Um, so I just wanted to come on and talk a little bit about me because, you know, it's all about me. Um, but just kind of like why I'm here and why I do what I do. Um, I've, I've had like a 32 year career in, in film and television. I'm not going anywhere. Um, even though I left the shops about uh, just under a year and a half ago, um, we have still been doing, and I say we with my wife and I at home here, um, have still been working on film, still been working on commercials. I'm bidding on my own little shows and things like that. So we're still working, we're still building, in addition to me building my own artwork behind here um, and trying to create things that people want to see and might want to buy for themselves. Um, but the reason I'm here, and I've said it so many times over the last three days, it's, it's Star Wars. I'm a Star Wars kid. I wasn't necessarily a Universal Monsters kid or a Godzilla kid, but I grew to appreciate all of that over my childhood. But, you know, like I, I, I showed you guys earlier on, um, you know, like Bruce Mitchell kind of exp inspired me to um, show some of the books. And I mean, these are ones that I've held on to forever. So this is that Star Wars book that I saved up my nickels and quarters and dimes from my folks. And it was, uh, where are my glasses? I, I have to read exactly. Otherwise I can't do it. So this is $5.95. Um, in the United States, 650 in Canada. This was back in 1977 or 78. This might have come out. 77, copyright 77. So I had to save up for this guy. And as was the one, like I told you earlier, that I found that picture, Stuart Freeborn doing the Peter Mayhew uh, uh, Chewbacca mask. You know that I I went to my dad and said, right there, Dad. That's what I want to do for a living. And you know, so that was my first book. This is my first special effects book, and I have held on to that scotch tape and the whole bit. I, I talked about the uh, Making a Monster book that uh, I got. This used to have a nice dust jacket on it. It's, it. That's gone. And this is such a great book that I have held on to forever. And this has every, you know, Cecil Holland, you know, it's like all the, the, the number of people that, this, you know, uh, um, Lee Greenway, William Tuttle, um, ben Nye Sr., and this goes all the way through Rick Baker, of course, and Morton Greenspoon, who did the contact lenses originally. Um, you know, so this was this was a Bible to me um, to learn about who all these makeup artists were. And I, I say, learn about your craft, learn about the people that came before you, and um, cherish that history because that's what I've always done. I wasn't necessarily a gore hound kid. I wasn't all about blood and gross out stuff and you know, sorry, it wasn't like Freddy Krueger or Jason or anything like that that got me into this industry. It was guys like Dick Smith doing like, you know, The Hunger and uh, doing the Salieri makeup in uh, uh, um, Amadeus or, you know, watching some of these great character makeups that they were doing on television and things like that. That's what got me into it. One of the, one of the films that really got me into um, makeup effects, oddly, was one of my favorite films. I still watch every year, once a year, 
which is um, A Christmas Carol, the story of Scrooge. It's the musical version that came out in, I think maybe 72, somewhere about there. And it was uh, Albert Finney who plays Scrooge. And he has two roles in the film, both, both as Scrooge. He plays the old man with the, you know, the way he hunches over and the hunched back and all that stuff, very skinny. And then in the film, when you see the, the, the past Scrooge, there's the young man with the puffed up chest and the full head of hair that's also Albert Finney. And when I got to a certain age and realized that Albert Finney is actually a young man playing a 70 year old man. And it's like, my God, they, they had to have put makeup on him. They, it was a bald cap and they thinned his hair and he might have you know colored his teeth and the, the stippling and the age makeup and drawing the lines. How did they make this 32 year old man into a 70-year-old miser. That's one of the first films I remember saying, makeup, they, somebody had to have done that makeup. And that's when I started to experiment on myself. So that's that's part of my story is finding these, you know, The Wizard of Oz when I was a kid, um, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, The, uh, the, the Child Catcher, um, watching films like that. And then of course, Star Wars came along and, and really changed me, models and miniatures and monsters and creatures. You know, another one of my favorite books that I bought and saved up for, you know, was a behind the scenes uh, book. What was it? Official Collector's Edition. And they still come out with these for every film. But this was such a new thing to uh, to film um, and to, to people like me that they started coming out with these little paperback books that showed you that they were molding the Tauntaun in this. Um, they're, you know, creating the at walkers and the, uh, you know, the C-3PO pieces and all this kind of stuff in these books. So these were just, these were treasures to me. And I held on to this stuff for forever. Um, another one of my first, like, uh, um, special effects. And this is all about miniatures and models and explosions and uh, frame rates. And there's some Jim Henson stuff in here. But again, just a, a book that... I held on to forever, you know, I've had this for 35 years or, or more. Um, and, uh, you know, just correct, collecting things like uh, uh, Boris Vallejo, Frazetta books, things like that. Um, and then, of course, when I first came out to L.A., I found this at a, at a um, Larry Edmonds bookstore. David knows this really well, right, da Larry Edmonds? And it's still there in Hollywood Boulevard. And I found this issue number 16, Sinfex, and it was all Rick Baker. So here I was, 17 years old. I came out here for the first time. My aunt uh, flew me out here, and uh, we uh, we stopped by Larry Edmonds, and I found this book. And it's like, yeah, that's it. That's the stuff I want to do. And you know, just poured over this. I, I, I've I've had two copies of this because this is my first copy, because um, it's it's nearly destroyed. It's like taped together. I've restapled it. Um, there's scotch tape on the inside, things like that. So. Um, it, it, it's this kind of stuff that you guys, you know, people who want to get into this, know your history, know your past, research it. It's what I, you know, I talked about with Ted Smith a little bit when I see on my page and on Ted's page that uh, people just are, you know, they, they, they've got something. It's like, hey, I, I want to build this. How should I do it? It's like research it. Figure it out. There's so much stuff out there, and we're happy to help you guys. It's why we do tutorials with the Stan Winston School. It's why Ted Smith does the YouTube tutorials. So many other great people around the world do these tutorials, and there's so much out there. We want to help you guys out, but know that you, you need to make a plan. You need to research. You know, you can't just be told how to build something. And uh, um, I'm, I'm happy to help people. I come from a line of educators. Both my parents were teachers. My sister's a teacher in Wisconsin. Um, my grandmother was a teacher for a while. And I know I had great aunts who were teachers. So um, I come from a long line of educators. And I love sharing what I do and how I build it and how I do this. So, you know, I've got my little C-3PO here from, uh, you know, this is from when I was a kid. This is very, this is old. So it's like another one of those things that I held on to, um, you know, that just reminded me why I'm in Los Angeles, why I, I packed up my car and with all of my books, you know, because I had a couple little, you know, like I said, my library now is like I, I'd have to pack up a van just to move my library. So, um, you know, I just, I, I don't stop researching. Um, so there's my spiel on what you should be doing and studying uh, to get into this industry, there's still a place for you. There's still a place for makeup effects artists, for creature builders and monster builders. 
miniature builders, they're still using this stuff. And with digital is not taking everything over. Practical effects is never going to come over as the 100% thing anymore, but they're going to find that marriage. And, and, and that's happening right now, uh, thanks to a lot of directors that want to combine all of these different uh, visual tricks, you know, using practical effects, using the digital along with it. It just improves everything. So there's, there's room for you guys. Study. And then as far as the people that are doing cosplay and just want to make great costumes for yourself to go to the conventions, um, you know, all the information's out there. I mean, for you guys to be building Hollywood quality costumes, and there's so many people out there. Whoa! <laughs> my God. Earthquake. Things are, it wasn't an earthquake. Um, uh, you know, there, there's just so much out there. You, you guys can be building Hollywood quality costumes and uh, um, for stage plays for high school and junior high. You know, there's such great quality out there now. I, even I will scroll through Instagram and go, oh, geez, what do I have to offer? These people are doing some amazing stuff. But then the same people will write me and going, you're doing amazing stuff. We're so just, we're learning everything from you. So we're learning from each other, which is really fantastic. So I'm going to keep doing what I do. I'm going to keep working on films. I'm going to keep doing tutorials. Um, I'm going to keep sculpting this guy, I promise. I'm super tired right now. I'm afraid right now if I picked up a razor knife, I'd take a finger off. So um, we're not going to do that tonight. So uh, I know it'd be some nice blood and gore, but I really don't want to end up in the ER with a, you know 15 <laughs> stitches or anything like that. But I want to introduce you guys, too, to a couple of people who are off camera. Um, number one, first I'm going to torture my daughter. Get over here. <laughs> How many people are watching? 257? Uh, actually, uh, 83. No, you're at 14 currently. So okay. Kind of fluctuate from there to 20. That's you're great. Getting a lot of um, awesome. Thank yous for putting this together. Well, you're very welcome. So this is my daughter Mackenzie. She's had to tolerate my action figures and my monsters and my books, and I keep telling her she's a fantastic artist herself. So how did you get into the industry, Mackenzie? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm she got in it. She got into the industry because her dad's here, and I mean, we were telling a story yesterday when Steve Johnson was here and I used to take her to the shop when she was wee little because I think I started at Steve's and you were not quite one years old yet mm -hmm. and I remember you being one or two years old at Steve's and wanted to touch the werewolves teeth teeth from uh, was it silver bullet or I can't remember the no, no it wasn't silver bullet I can't remember what it was but she always talked about the pretty lady at the top of the stairs and I didn't know what the pretty lady was at the top of the stairs because there was nothing but creatures and monsters. Do you remember what it was? No. Okay. <laughs> it was it this big. It was the design based off of H.R. Giger's design for species. It was sill. Mm. All this great vacuform plastic and urethanes and silicones like that. And it, I, I thought it was scary as hell to a two-year-old. <laughs> but to my daughter, it was the pretty lady at the top of the stairs and I always wanted to go look at the pretty lady and touch her touch her skin and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's her introduction. But I'm so happy because what do you normally want to be for Halloween? Something scary and bloody. There you go. <laughs> yes, I've done it right. You succeeded. You is suggesting Bad Moon? For the bad Moon, yes, yes, yes. That's what it was. Because I think it was, uh, was it Mario Van Peebles maybe that was in that? <coughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah. No, she's always been something scary. Mm -hmm. We were telling the story earlier um, off camera that I took you to, what, when you were 10 years old? Oh, Zombieland. Zombieland. Oh, Zombieland. <laughs> One of the best movies. And, and were you were you scared? No, oh, I was excited. Did you love it? I did. And, Still one and, of my favorites. And how were you dressed when we went and saw Zombieland on opening night on a Friday? I was dressed as a 50s zombie, I think, decked out with blood and veins she, and a bite mark. A big and... bite mark out of her neck that her dad did, that I did, and mm -hmm. all these little spidery veins all over the place. And she loved the movie, and we got up to walk out of the movie at the end of the movie. And the people in the row ahead of us were standing up. Everybody has enjoyed it. We enjoyed the film. It's a fun movie. Zombieland's a, a great film. Turned around and looked at her, and this guy did a double take and almost went over the chairs in front of him. <laughs> she forgot she was dressed like a zombie. I was kind of, you know, I've forgotten that she, you know, blood down this cute little uh, um, sweater that, you know, she wanted to be a 50 zombie girl. Yeah. You know, at 10 years old, I yeah, believe. you were like 10. That. So, And you were dressed like that for school all day long as well. Yeah. So, you know, it was a Friday. So it was Friday, Halloween, Friday mm -hmm. at school. Everybody got their dress up. So, yeah. 
Yeah. And you've been a dead cheerleader. I've been a dead everything. You've I been think just about. <laughs> uh, Larry Stroth was here um, just a moment ago too, um, from Monster Party <laughs> podcast, mm-hmm. and he was here again with his daughter, and um, we had done a dress I, for Reagan yeah. from The Exorcist. Yeah. And so Larry was like, can we borrow that? Can we borrow that dress? I said, absolutely. We're going to pull it out of the costume box. And Mm -hmm. so now his daughter's going to wear it. So we pass along the, uh, the gore (laughs) to new generations and all that kind of stuff. So, but you're an artist. I am. You're studying, trying to figure out what you want to do next. Yeah. Okay. Taking all, taking all the classes. Taking classes. Doing all the stuff. And like I keep saying, everybody, you've got to study. Mm -hmm. Learn who came before. Mm Mm-hmm. No, your no art history classes yet. No, nope. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that's the thing. It's like you know, it's it's all to come. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Did you have fun at Monster Palooza? I did. It You've been coming to Monster Palooza since you were since the first time. a little kid. Yeah. Yeah. I think I mean, we went to the first one. Yep. Together. We, we've been but. to the first one and second and third and fourth, and we always went. I think we've only missed a couple of like son of Paloozas. Sure. Yeah. We've so, at least gone once a year. I think. I think we usually are. Yeah. So, but well, how was this Monster Palooza? I mean, I've been to a couple other booths around here, yeah. but this is the best one. Is this the I best think. booth? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, I mean, you're tied Palooza? with like one other person. That's but, great. Yeah. I, I I like to hear that I've got the best booth this year. Yeah. yeah. So no, it's it's pretty great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You did so a good job. are you tired of your dad building big rubber monsters yet? Get out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to introduce another part of our crew. David Woodruff has been working behind the scenes. Switching our cameras, um, doing all that kind of stuff, um, and just welcoming guests and, and just being a really great support behind the scenes. Um, David Woodruff, if you can't figure out from his last name, is the son of Tom Woodruff Jr., who is, of course, 50% of ADI. Uh, so, David, you grew up around monsters and creatures. You were another, like Mackenzie, where you got pulled yes. into the shops and... So, I mean, your dad's your dad, whatever, it's your dad. You know, everybody else, you know, there's a lot of people look up to your dad. He's, he's pumpkin head. He's, you know, an alien creature. He's, you know, all these different things. But, you know, obviously he's, you know, whatever, he's my dad. But, like, growing up around all this stuff, like, how did it, what was it like for you? Uh, well, so I get that question. It's like, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure Mackenzie may be in a similar spot to some degree. But, but you always get the people who are like, what's it like growing up with, you know, pumpkin oh, yeah. head, and you're like, as opposed to. What? Well, no, and I, I know, I know your dad. I, your dad is just, I mean, and I never worked at ADI. I never knew your dad, Tom. You know, you, Tom's just Tom. I just know your dad, so I never worked at ADI, and I got to know Tom as a friend. Yeah. So, but but I, there was nothing else for me. There's no comparison. So it was sure. the, So it's it's always. A, but you it's grew up normal. Around, yeah, no, no, like, not not so much that it's like. What was it like to grow up with Tom Woodruff? Yeah, yeah, it's like, but, what was it like to grow up around that atmosphere of like your dad's working on these big films and these? I would say it's definitely it was definitely exciting. Um, not the normal childhood. No, not not. But for at you, all. it was. I mean, it's like I remember. I don't know what year it was. I mean, aside from aside from going on a tour to Stan Winston's in the the. Uh, what sometime during the year, year and a half prep is that what they said they had yeah, on year Jurassic and a half Park? Jurassic, yeah. And walking out, and there's a full size T Rex, and Stan let us paint, you know, a little bit of it as like four or five year old kids, and little Pache airbrushes. But <laughs> when I was a little bit older, and really, do you have that on your resume? To, not yet. I've, to, I've, I've there, there, there are so many times where I'm like, I should, you should, <laughs> you should do it. Um, but. When I was a little bit more aware of these things uh, later on, in the like mid '90s, we got to go up to Vancouver and visit the sets of uh, uh, Mortal Kombat and Jumanji. Um, and so, not only was that eye opening, mm-hmm. you know, everybody has that moment. Like uh, it was Jumanji for me. I just remember being there, and even though I knew I was in the way, <laughs> I also felt like on set was where I was supposed to be. Right. Like it felt like home. So you're kind of bitten by that bug. Yeah, but it was it wasn't it wasn't just this bug. It right. was it was the on set, on set. bug. Yeah, uh, from a very early age. But that's then, magic that happens on set. It oh, really yeah. is. And and that was also at a time where people were. I don't know exactly what happened behind the scenes, but they they were a little bit more loose with things. Yeah. I want to say 
So, like, we're all in elementary school. We go up there shooting Jumanji. We come back. Jumanji's, you know, done, and they're, they're in post or whatever, and they, they put it out, and they have a, a start date. And my dad went somewhere to somebody at the studio and was like, hey, let's show it to a bunch of these kids. So my elementary school got a private early screening at this movie theater on Fallbrook of yeah. Jumanji before yeah. the movie was out. And so it's like growing up, it's like you have stuff like that going on. So it's, it's really exciting. Even right. then, I knew that it was special. There was something special going on. Yeah. And I mean, you've got two brothers. You've got yeah. Connor and... Taylor. Taylor, who I've not met Taylor, actually. Um, but so you're the only, like, you're in film. That yeah. film bug bit you. Yeah. Now Connor's a performer. He does a lot of performing. Uh, I don't know quite how much I can say. He, he performs at amusement parks. He's friends with he's a, friends with characters of a we all know. Nature. Yeah, um, but but he's periodically worked at Universal he'll Studios tap into, as well. Yeah, and, he does characters yeah. at Universal and he does some show crew at Universal. Okay, um, it seems like he's very tied to the theme parks though. Um, periodically, he'll get pulled into a couple of things. Like we've yep. done makeup tests on him for for some early Maze Runner tests and some stuff. So he's not uh, super crazy foreign to the film stuff. Um, <laughs> He's done but some he's TV perform- show episodes as a performer like your dad. Ex- he's exactly. In, in costumes and suits. So. I, I'm pretty sure that one or two of these shows has rendered him SAG eligible. Oh, okay. And it just kind of like, pff, and he like <laughs> hasn't done it because, <laughs> no, you know, he has right. his whatever path he's on. So right. he's very tied to the theme parks. That's great. So, I mean, and you're accomplished. I'm going to get some sleep tonight at some point or another, but you're an accomplished makeup artist. I mean, you. If you follow David, no, no, you're a fantastic sculptor. You do a lot of sculpts for um, RB effects. Is I've, that, I've been that right? very. Lo- uh, I don't know. I don't know that he wants to be named directly, but at, at RB effects. Art, yeah, okay. Um, he's given me so many opportunities. I can't even tell you. Way back to my first time meeting Bruce Fuller, was modeling for an RB effects makeup. Okay. Um, and he was at his old shop. I think he had been around for a year or less, a little less than a year at the time. But I just kept needling him. And it literally got to the point he goes, well, can you come in tomorrow so Bruce Fuller can do a makeup on you? And I was in the middle of a zero-budget project working out of my shop with Shannon Shea. Okay. <laughs> and I was in that for a couple of things. I was in a Wayne Anderson de- demon, and we did some makeups, and we, we made Shannon, uh, or we tested it on it, but we had to do like a pregnant belly, that infl- all these little gags, a lot of plastic bags. Right, plastic bags. Um, but so I was on that, and I got this text or message or something, and I was like, well, I wrap around 2 tonight, uh, and I think you want to meet there at 8 or whatever. So I was like, by the time I get home, I can do like two hours of sleep. And I was just like, I'm going to do it, because you don't always get this chance. And then since then, I've modeled for him, I've applied for him at trade shows, I've made molds for him, and I've sculpted for You've him. You've sculpted pieces. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've done... No, yeah, almost it's, all of it. it Short it, of running the foam or running right, some pieces, right. I've, I've done a little bit of everything. And he's been great. I'm going back there tomorrow. And you did a great makeup on your dad at one of the Paloozas, right? Uh, which uh, Karloff? The Karloff. The Karloff was a lot of fun. There are things I would have, I would change, which is the other. It's funny. I actually, you guys had touched on it in a couple of interviews, in um, like the Crimson. Uh, oh, Crimson, uh, a Crimson Man. That you did with Mike Papa. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see things that I would change, and I have to fight myself to not do Karloff again. Right. Um, and so I, I, I don't want to do him again, even though I. Sure. As much as I've changed, you want to keep that, tweaking I, I it. Just, you want to keep. I, I can't let myself keep tweaking right. it because then I'll have a portfolio full of Paris Karloff. So. Yeah, exactly. No, same thing with me. It's like, how many times can I redo that first gag that I was saddled with a John Beekler? Yeah. And it's like, I, I still, I think I should do it. I, th- I think I should try to figure it out and see if I can. It'd be funny if we did after it, this long. Yeah, to see and just to know what I know. There's honestly a lot of things I wouldn't change about it, but there's some things just mechanically that I know now that I didn't know then or materials. Right, materials. Like that, because I mean, again, we were using two by fours in Dacron line. It's like, well, maybe I'll do some like you know quarter inch aluminum with some better handles and you know some cables instead of Dacron. Or maybe, but the, it's the materials that I would use because it doesn't matter what is off camera; it's what's on camera that right. happens. I mean, there, uh, trust me, a lot of magic happens with duct tape <laughs> and tape. You know, tape and tape and spit. You know, it's just like at the last the, minute some bailing wire. And the first AVP, I don't know if there was. I think they changed the schedules. And, and the suits hadn't gotten to Prague. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and so they had somehow they had the from what I understand they had the molds out there already, but the actual suits hadn't been finished, hadn't made it out, and they had to, the predator was on camera the next day. Oh boy! So they like did slip latex out of a mold, and like the necklace was like you know grip cord, and and they were like, and we held the that movie was held together with zip ties and super glue, and they had to put this thing together. And it's the first time you see the Predator on right. camera in that movie. And you wouldn't guess it. You'd never know. With the lighting and the act, I mean, it's it's such a collaborative thing that looking at your task at that moment, it can get really intimidating. But when you realize that 30 other elements are bringing that character to life, there's some there's You know, room. things change like this on set. They just flip like a dime. And, or, or flip on a dime, you know. It's just like, and and it's like you can spend two months building a brilliant costume, and because of schedule changes, you have to build something out of garbage, you know, yeah. in, in the eleventh hour, so that they can shoot it. <laughs> but you spend two months building this thing, but no, 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 no. We now we want to see this, and it's like, well, we didn't build that, so you know, let's pull it out of a makeup kit really quick, or out of your toolbox, or just a bunch of garbage, or some leftover pieces from runs from this yep. or that. So. You know, it's 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 still we've talked about this many times the last few days of just that ingenuity. Yeah, the problem solving. The problem of solving. It, you know, and that's it's a huge thing for anybody that's watching that wants to get into the industry. It's that problem solving. It's thinking on the fly. It's not somebody is not going to come up with this for you. There's going to be time when you're on set and you might be by yourself or with one other person and figure it out. You yeah. got to come up with it, and you better have a prepared tool cut box. And I, I always go back to Jaws, um, and it's not even an, uh, an effects thing. And I, I think it's easier for me to change the way I look at what I'm doing because it's not directly related. But one of the scenes in that movie that I think is the most terrifying in the in the beginning in the um, skinny dipping sequence mm-hmm. where she's jerked around. Mm-hmm in the water that was supposed to be a big shark scene right and the shark broke down sure and you have a whole crew there and spielberg being spielberg has a how can i fill this space in the story and still make it work right now right and i think it's scarier than it would have been if you saw the shark no absolutely and i think you know everybody knows the story where it's just like yeah the shark broke down we all know the shark broke down but it, it made for a better story and that's why creatures are better left in the shadows at times, you know. Oh, yeah. So, you know, a lot of this painstaking work that we do, if if they're doing it the right way, you don't see it all that much. You don't see it all that often. There's there's a film I worked on at Legacy that I don't even think I can say anything about it. It's going to be not coming out. Yet. No, it's not out yet. And, you know, it's because of COVID. It got backed up and all that kind of stuff. But I can't wait for it to come out. I can't wait to share pictures of prototypes that I built and all that kind of stuff. So. Because it's, I, I think they did it right. It's going to be creepy and scary and in the shadows and all this kind of stuff. And it was really fun to watch it come together, yeah. to watch it be built. So, thank you for yeah. your three days of work yeah, behind the camera me. here. And we're going to do stuff in front of the camera with each other coming up. Yes. But yeah, you you worked your butt off here. This has here been every fantastic. Day. I wanted to be here every day because it really was like Palooza. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's great. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, there, there was a quartet. One of our quartet is not here, and I'm going to thank him. He's off camera. Um, he's not even off camera. He's off the premises right now, um, but I don't blame him. His, his, his wife came into town, and they're all having dinner, which is fantastic, but that's uh, Peter Luong. And um, Peter knew I was going to be doing this. Peter, I've been working with doing these, um, these 3D scans of of my characters um i'm working with uh, jeff colby at uh, motion picture effects that like i said we're going to be auctioning when i finish this guy and i will be doing some instagram live with this guy um we have a nice print of them like a poster size print that everybody's been signing we're going to auction that off together um those proceeds are going to go to a, a um a thing that they're putting together at motion picture effects called uh, monster club kids so you can sign up to get these kits and they're sent to kids for free um, where they can uh, paint a mask, put hair on a mask. Um, I hear that there's going to be some very A-list makeup effects people involved with this. I'm not going to name names because I'm not part of that. I'll let Jeff announce all that kind of stuff. I just know a few of the details. but Jeff actually just said you guys did a fantastic job. It was so cool to hear everyone talk. Thanks very much, Jeff. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you introducing me to Peter who has become a fast friend of mine and is just, his help is immense. I mean, my wife alone and I were gonna do this with an iPad and a microphone 
and uh, I told Peter about that, and he goes, "No, no, no, I, I've got a few things. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring a few <laughs> things over. We have a three camera setup. We are recording everything, and at some point or another, that's gonna all go into YouTube. Not I, that. what's that? <laughs> Not this. I forgot to turn it on. What's it's that? All, I think. This. No, no, it's all being recorded oh, okay, right here. Right. It's being stored here. Um, so this is all being recorded. It's all being stored. It's going to go onto YouTube. We're going to have to do some editing, obviously. We had some tech issues in the very beginning. Peter's helping us work all of that stuff out. He, he, he was here. It was amazing. It's like, well, let me come three hours before every shoot and set up. But he was also here Thursday for eight hours, nine hours, yeah. something like that, up until like 1 a.m., um, on Friday morning and um, he's worked tirelessly and brought so much of his personal equipment and so a huge thank you to Peter Long that it just that this wouldn't have happened the way it happened without him and he was learning we were learning trying to make this look better for you guys because I just wanted to put on a good monster palooza for everybody um, and and there you have it but the fourth member of our team you have to come over here now this is my wife Ilona Yay! Hi, Ilona. everybody. So, <laughs> well, Ooh, yes, yes. I mean, I will say, you know, yeah, one like, of the perks of working at Legacy was we got, some, we got some good crew shirts. Crew, good crew shirts. <laughs> what did you want? You did the gloves for... Oh, yeah. My big contribution to uh, Captain Marvel was the uh, gloves for the... I don't know. I was in a fitting with Jude Law. I'm not sure what those characters I, I, were, yeah, were, were called. I it's, feel terrible we're tired, saying whatever. that. Whatever. <laughs> so Jude Law's character, she made all of Jude Law's gloves. For He's that. very nice and charming in person, ladies. <laughs> I'm sitting right here. Yes, and Rick I love Allenson you. Rick Allenson says, Alona! Rick! <laughs> so no, Alona, my wife, um, puts up with my gigantic shenanigans <laughs> oh i knew what i was getting myself into let's be honest here because ted and i worked together for like a year and a half before we started dating it's like i was very aware <laughs> there were no surprises there <laughs> but yes we we when we got married we turned this this what was a, a just your average garage into a very nice shop it's a very large space and we've turned this we've got fabrication over here foam fabrication over here foam up here some collectibles and action figures, whatever, <laughs> like, uh, that's my stuff. But, um, you know, these things on shelves and well like that. But thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm really it's proud of you. <laughs> no, it's, it's... She has she has <laughs> ordered prints. She was helping with the t-shirt. She's been doing a lot of, like, um, what was the program you're working in? Affinity Designer. Affinity which is Designer. like kind of an illustrator style program, yeah. Right, so helping out with a lot of the stuff that I've been posting on Instagram and things like that. Um, she designed my enamel pins that will be up on Etsy at some point very soon. Yep, next um, couple of days. Next couple of days um, and ordering stickers and doing all that kind of stuff. So thank you, sweetie. You're welcome. And I think it's been really awesome to see. Well, a shout out to all of our legacy family. Seriously, yes. we miss all of you guys. It was so great. All of you who stopped by, Rick, Jesse, Jasper, Jamie, Carrie, yep. whoever else, Alan. you know, all the people who tuned in, <laughs> Bruce, all of those people, like, it was so great to see everybody and see them in the comments. Um, there's a lot to be said for being in super intense working situations with people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really bonds you in a way that a lot of other things don't. Any of you who have been on set, you know that you have your family that you, you, <laughs> you create when you have to work in really tough deadlines with people. Um, so it was really great to see all of you guys and see you guys chiming in and watching and stuff like that. And it was also really great seeing all the comments come in. Um, you know, people just really appreciating what you did, Ted. And, you know, Mike Papa earlier today was saying that listening to everybody was really inspiring to him, which was such a neat thing. Bruce Mitchell, you got a special shout out from Mike about being inspiring. <laughs> Um, and that was just, you know, it was really great. And I and Steve Johnson made Nicholas Winstead's oh my day God. <laughs> by giving him a shout out. Can we do a shout out for Elliot Brodsky as well? Oh, oh absolutely. A hundred percent. Of course. Elliot Brodsky. I was going to do a shout out to Elliot Brodsky. Um, when I came up with this idea, like I said, it, it, it snowballed. And I thought, you know, I'll just do this on Monster Palooza weekend, which I couldn't do because luckily I got to do a nice little short job at Steve Wang's shop. And so thank you very much, Steve Wang, if you're watching or if you ever watch this. But, um, you know, I hadn't met Steve before. I thought this would be a neat opportunity. I'll go work at Steve's shop. I'm going to do this neat little gag. And uh, so we bumped this back a week further than what I had wanted to. But I, I reached out to Elliot Brodsky 
as soon as this started to get a little bit bigger than what I thought it was going to be, <coughs> and it became more Monster Palooza ish instead of just doing it on that weekend and me doing some stuff, I reached out to Elliot right away and just said, "Could I please use the Monster Party or Monster Party? Jesus, Monster Elliot <laughs> Larry Stroth was just here, and he needs sleep. And He's I need very some sleep. Tired. No, but it, I said, could I please use the Monster Palooza name? I said I'm going to be doing some foam fabricating." I'm thinking I'm going to do a couple of little interviews. I'm going to try to get some old colleagues on here and some friends. And uh, would you mind if I use the uh, the Monster Palooza name? And Elliot was really supportive, extremely helpful. They've been posting on Monster Palooza official and uh, helping out and sending a lot of love. So thank you so much, Elliot, for allowing me to to use this this uh, name. And even me adding the mini. I don't, I don't even know if I asked you if I could do the mini thing. Like I just stuck it on there. And Elliot said, cool, I love it. So um, thank you so much for letting me do this. And, um, you know, if, if we happen to miss another Monster Palooza, I'm going to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, because Wait. I think I'm really proud of you. And I think you've done a really great thing for a lot of people this weekend. You've given them a break from the stress of the world. Yeah. You've brought in people and talked to them in a way that maybe they don't normally get interviewed. You've gotten a chance to connect with people that you have really great history with and have bonded with over years of you know, work. And I just think it's been a really, really, really lovely thing that you've done for everybody. And I'm just really proud of you for all of it. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, and... To, to cap it all off, I, again, I will be coming back and doing some lives of Building This Guy. I very much promise we're going to be doing that very, very soon, um, all the way through to the completion of this guy. And there's going to be more stuff to come, and I'll be announcing that at some point soon as well. But I'm going to thank everybody by name. Luckily, they're written down. They're in front of me <laughs> from every single day. I want to thank my good friend Tom Woodruff, Jr., for coming in on Friday and being my very first guest on here. Even though I've known Tom for years, I was very nervous to <laughs> interview him, <laughs> but um, we're, we're friends and it was a, like an odd situation. But so thank you, Tom Woodruff, Gordon Tarpley. It was great to meet you. My boss of 15 years, Alan Scott, thank you so much for coming by and sharing the props that you shared <laughs> because that was so fun to see when you pulled it out of the, the box and the bag and it's just like, God, ah! but it was just the flood of memories. It's like that guy. And I spent 15 great years at Legacy Effects. So thank you, Alan, for coming by. Mike Deke is, um, I've known Mike Deke for over 30 years. You know, I, I met him that first week at John Beekler's. Um, Mike Deke, thank you so much for coming by. Uh, you never change. You are always Mike Deke. Uh, you know, uh, it's just great. And Tamara, Tamara Carlson Woodard, thank you so much. Dawn Dininger, thank you so much. Uh, Tamara, I've known almost as long as I knew Mike Deke. Um, not quite as long. Dawn Dininger, um, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, fellow fabricator. Uh, Ken Calhoun and Piff Phillips, thank you so much for coming in and showing off. You know, it's just some of the young people that are coming up in this industry and so talented. Mark Tavares, an old friend of mine from K&B. Mark is funny as hell far so talented you know his artistic skill and it's just it, it blows me away every time i see mark do what he calls on instagram and facebook a sketch i just did this sketch of somebody and it's like a sketch to me is like something you do real quick to convey an idea and mark does these beautiful paintings that are sketches um mark tavares is fantastic thank you so much i love you mark um steve johnson and constantine sakaris um, number one, Constantine, thank you so much. You always have this energy, this beautiful energy. You're so positive and you're always so great to me at Legacy or at Legacy, at Steve Johnson's shop at Edge Effects. Um, every time, I, I just loved coming up into your room, into your design room, and you were always so free with information. And here's how you draw, do this a little bit more and do that a little bit more. Oh yeah, that's so much better, very encouraging. And so Constantine, I always looked up to you. Um, such a beautiful designer and you've just gone so far and it's just amazing but thank you so much Steve Johnson for coming in um, that meant the world to me to have you come in and sit here with me and sit here with Constantine and talk about these old days you have no idea the six years I spent at your shop what that meant to me um, you know just the way you treated the artists there and everything like that it was just fantastic so thank you Steve yeah, I really appreciate it Larry Stroth <laughs> and his daughter Kathy to come here, Larry. Your energy is just endless energy. I did their podcast once. It was like a couple of years ago mm. that I was on the Monster Party podcast, and 
all four of those guys so amazingly intimidating just their depth of knowledge of film and monsters and everything like that but larry's energy is infectious <laughs> and i love larry um he was here just a second ago um with his daughter again they had to stop by there in the neighborhood and wanted to stop by and see the last people that we were interviewing so thank you larry for being here i appreciate that jasper anderson another young person in the industry that is making fantastic things check him out his sculptures his masks that he's doing for trick-or-treat studios are just fantastic the, the the raven he's built is great bruce mitchell who i met over 20 years ago um you know such a fabulous artist and bruce i've been working kind of very, you know, shoulder to shoulder with for ever since Scooby-Doo too. So, um, Bruce, thanks so much for coming in. He lives just a few blocks away, so I, hopefully it was very easy for him and brought his <laughs> kids by the booth. It was it was great. Um, evil Ted Smith, Ted Smith. He's just Ted. Um, but thanks, Ted, for coming by. We have never worked together, but we were always cross crossing paths, or one came right after the other here like that. And you know, we've never worked together. We're going to work together in the future and do something great together. Um, Ted has put so much great information out these last six or seven years on YouTube. Um, everybody should be following him. He's such a great instructor as well, you know, just, just sharing his depth of knowledge of his 30 plus years in the industry. So, Ted, thank you so much for coming on. Jeff Daniel Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> I did what you told me. Jeff. <laughs> thank you so and much. And my husband cursed you afterwards. Your mask on for this. Oh, wait, wait. Where's my. <laughs> Where's my mask? I should have my mask on because Jeff Jeff insisted that I wear a mask because he was fucking with you. Even yes, he was completely <laughs> mercilessly fucking with me. And that's why he took his mask off, I found out. But Jeff Daniel Phillips, um, thank you so much for coming in. Uh and and sharing stories and sharing your time with us. We worked on a project very quickly that we can't talk about. And it's going to be in the future, and it's going to be fabulous, and I cannot it wait to see. It sounds super cool. Yeah. It, it's going to be amazing, and I can't wait to see it all happen. It will happen, and uh, then I'm going to have Jeff back here, and I'm going to make him wear a mask the entire time. <laughs> Just um, to spite him. <laughs> Mr. Dana Gould, I cannot thank you enough. I'm going to I'm going to tell you all this. This was just a roll of the dice. I have seen Dana at almost every Monster Palooza. I listen to Dana's podcasts. Um, I've been listening to that for years. I have been listening to Dana's comedy for years, um, and I appreciate his comedy and his humor, his writing, and his um, just honesty. If you follow him on Instagram, he's a very honest person. He does not hide what he believes about the world and all that stuff, so I appreciate that. But it was a roll of the dice. Like I said, I, I, I reached out to him and said, would you like to come by Monster Palooza, meaning my small little shop? and share some stories and share some props if you had something and i thought i'm never going to hear back from dana gold but you know i thought it would be fun to reach out it's not gonna oh dana just wrote back that's amazing like i was like dana gold's gonna come this is incredible so thank you dana so much for showing up uh you made my day fantastic mike papa thank you so much for coming by mike lives three blocks away from me but it's such a great friendship started with mike papa working on a crimson man working on lower world we're going to do something else with him we're always going to do something with him so um you know helping out fellow filmmakers um that's what we do and i was helping out a fellow filmmaker when i i decided to do a crimson man and i just made a friend and now i'm just we're helping each other out you know i'm sure you know i've, I've talked to mike about wanting to direct my own short little films and, and he's like, well i'll do your storyboards i'll do that i'll do some animatics that'll be great so um, thank you so much, Mike, for coming in. Nicholas Winstead, who I only just met a week and a half ago and got to see some of his art. Um, thanks for coming in and sharing so much of your beautiful work um, and, and letting other people see that. I hope you guys go and follow, follow uh, Nicholas Winstead on Instagram as well. It's so much beautiful stuff. And he's a young man in the industry and he's just going to rise. I mean, it's just, it's, he's going to do great stuff. So thanks yeah, Nicholas for coming in. That much determination and commitment to like watching him say that like these sculptures were just sort of a practice or a yeah. test, like an exercise. It was pieces. like, <laughs> well, it's way to go, buddy. Do, do better next time, <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> I'm going to play for it again. Fantastic work. <laughs> um, Mr. Howard Berger. Thank you so much for coming on here and taking your time. I know 
you know, everybody wanted to see Howard sit down here and everything like that, but we got the absolute next best thing. It felt like, Howard, you were right here. And again, thank you for a wonderful five years at your shop. Um, all the way, I think I started out in the mouth of madness and ended with, I, I can't remember what I ended with over there. Um, actually, it might have been Universal Soldier 2 or something like that. So, But we did so much great work, so much fun work. And the crew there was always just perfect. We're all buddies and friends and like that. And you see these guys at Monster Palooza, and no time has passed. You know, all of a sudden, you know, we might have to squint for a second and going, oh my God, that's so and so. And you start talking, <laughs> and it's like, nope, that's Mark Tavares. Nope, that's Howard Berger. Nope, that's Wayne Toth or something like that. But Howard Berger, thank you so much for taking time to do this. I know you're a busy man, and I greatly appreciate it. And I'm going to give you to please share the thanks with Greg Nicotero and uh, uh, Bob Kurtzman because all three of you guys gave me that shot at KMB and you kept me there for five years until I moved on somewhere else like we all do sometimes. But Howard, thank you so much. I, I, a fantastic boss and, and a great friend, you know, even though we, we live miles away from some of these people, we just don't see them, but it was great to see you. Um, thank you, Howard. Rick Gallinson, uh, a good buddy of mine, uh, Again, we all live within like spitting distance of each <laughs> other. But Rick Allenton, thank you so much for coming on, sharing your expertise, telling everybody how smart you are. And we didn't even talk about the fact that you have a robotics team. Oh my God, <laughs> how did we leave that out that you have a team robot, robot team, uh, team Gallantson. Um, But yeah, R Rick is a brilliant guy who comes up with amazing engineering, feats of engineering. Um, his mechanical skills are endless. And he is just such a great friend. When I'm working on something personal, Alona has been working on a personal project. Um, we, we should plug it. What's your personal project? <laughs> uh, if you look up Escape Club Creative okay. on Instagram. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. <laughs> I've got one sitting right here because I use it. We're, we're starting a line of tools uh, made by industry professionals for the people who want them. Um, our first offering is pin magnets that don't, that it's don't a, shatter. It's a pin puck. So yeah, exactly. these are made out of a, uh, a special resin. material. Yeah. And uh, they're not necessarily flexible, but yeah, they, they, they hold your pins and all that kind of stuff. And for those and, of you who know the pain and suffering of a grab it, being duct taped together a million times over, we're trying to solve that problem. So yeah. uh, no. uh, look Escape Club Creative. So anyhow, <laughs> my point being... Rick is very helpful. Rick and Allison wonderful. is amazingly helpful. <laughs> and I had an engineering problem that I was quandary. trying to... Quandary. I was trying to figure out... And I posed this issue to Rick and I said, this is kind of my idea. And as I was talking to him on the phone, he texted me an image of what I was talking about and said, oh, I'm laser cutting this right now. Oh, I'm actually 3D printing this thing right now. When do you want this? And I said, well, I don't know, maybe like, you know, next week. No, 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 it's gonna be off the bed in about an hour or something. Why don't you come over and get it? And it's like, you know, this is the kind of person Rick Allenson is. You know, you just, you, you start asking him a question and he's just got it built in an hour. So, um, you know, Rick's a fantastic friend. I've always enjoyed being around him, going to set with him and just being a friend. So uh, thank you, Rick. Thank you to my friend for coming in and doing this. Um, I'm sorry I didn't have a beer for you. Did he have a beer while he was He did have a beer Thank afterwards. God, okay, good. <laughs> so uh, uh, thank you, Rick. Um, Jesse Gee, <coughs> thank you for, so much for coming in here and just simply being Jesse Gee. They get the Jesse Gee we all know and love, but he's such a brilliant artist. Um, thank you, Wilco the dog, for, for not barking, barking too and... much. No, but Jesse, thank you so much, sharing your art, coming in here and actually throwing, showing people how you put together a piece, although, albeit, you know, like a very quick study, but you know, how your mind works and all that. It's just, it's just brilliant. And by the way, um, hang on to that piece that you had here because I think Alona might let me uh, uh, buy that. So. <laughs> and Jesse is a fabulous dancer. Anybody who has oh, the good fortune to work with Jesse would know that. Jesse can <laughs> dance like a devil. It's amazing. <laughs> but yeah, a, an amazingly talented man, but a, a, another good friend. Um, and I always look forward to seeing him and working with him. Thank you so much, uh, Jesse Gee, for coming. And lastly... Jamie Siska and Carrie Gunner Lee, thank you so much for coming and just talking and sharing, you know, your experiences and your stories in the industry. Um, you guys haven't been out here that long either. It's like, you know, it's I know Jamie said ten years. 
you know, like that. And it feels sometimes like 10 years is long. I've been doing it over 30. You've got like 32 more or, or 22 more years to go, Jamie <laughs> and, and Carrie. So <laughs> don't think it's over. You've got a while to go. But yeah, thank you so much for coming in, both of you, um, and sharing your stories. And, uh, uh, you know, how in all of you sharing your stories, how you came out here. You know why you were interested in what we do and uh you know again just just my little reminder of why i do what i do and it's always comes back to star wars this is what hangs in my shop that i drew when i was nine years old came came back from watching star wars probably for the fourth time you know begging my parents for real quarters. quickly you should tell the story about your dad's reaction to star wars my dad <laughs> because I, it's hilarious my brother so funny <laughs> my brother and i my brother and i had seen star wars i think <coughs> At least I had. I know my brother, my brother Steve, who's just a year younger than me. Um, we were both kind of Star Wars nuts, and I think I'd easily seen Star Wars about six times, seven times. I think I think it was going on nine times that I had seen it in the theater within within the year of it coming out. And you know, we all know that that played in the theater for you know such a long time. And um, my parents finally went, "We should see what this Star Wars thing is all about." <laughs> You know, and I was so excited for them. They're going to go see it. They're going to go see Star Wars. And so they made a date of it. And they went and they, I think they went and had dinner. And they might have gone with some friends. I'm not sure. And they went and saw Star Wars. And I sat at home with my brother and my sister, who's just a couple years older than me. And I couldn't wait to hear what my dad thought. Because this this was, <laughs> this, this was, this was my world, Star Wars. I can't wait to hear what my mom and dad had to say. My mom, like, oh, it was a, that was a good story. It was interesting. And like that and my dad's reaction to it was you know uh those guys the two guys in that changed costumes several times i think and that girl just had that white dress on the entire time <laughs> what else dad oh that was about it he commented that han and luke changed outfits a couple of times and that princess leia only ever had a white dress on that was my dad's reaction can I tell my Mark Hamill story? Tell your Mark Hamill story. It's not story. really a Mark Hamill story. It's about his son, which I'm sure um, Dana Gould would know. I don't remember which son it is. But I was at a party. I had just come to L.A. I was fairly new here. And my friend had me go with her to a party in Venice. And it's like, I'm not really a West Side lady. And everybody there was very fancy and trendy and all these things. And there was one dude sitting off in a corner with a hoodie on. I was like, that's probably the kind of guy I can talk to. So I went and talked to him, and we were, you know, chatting, whatever, and he mentions that his dad's an actor. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, and I was working in theater at the time where nobody makes a living being an actor. And so I asked him, I was like, well, you know, like, does your dad actually make a living being an actor? And he was like, yeah, he does okay. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, what has he been in? And he's like, my dad is uh, Luke Skywalker. And I was like... (laughs) Oh, I'm so stupid. And then it like occurred to me that he looks just like his dad. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go away now. <laughs> I felt so dumb. But anyways, that's my, that's my closest getting to Mark Hamill story. So. I, I got to meet Han Solo. <laughs> Albeit for a moment. Well, it's better than nothing, right? It's better than nothing. So, well, we're wrapping up here, guys. Thanks to everybody. I think I thanked everybody that was involved here and thanks to you for being uh having a lot of ambition and putting this on and being brave and doing something that everybody really I, loved and appreciated. i shoot high <laughs> i don't do anything small no he doesn't <laughs> i don't do anything small <laughs> I, i'm gonna make a mask it's gonna be a little bigger than this no nah, it's gonna be 30 <laughs> inches tall so <laughs> everybody out there i hope you enjoyed this there's gonna be more to come in future not too far distant future um, we're going to be getting the Etsy store up. Keep watching at Foam Faber on Instagram for live videos, photographs, old pictures, new stuff. Um, thanks so much for, for uh, tuning in. And uh, thanks for liking Monsters. Bye-bye, thanks everybody. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.